Hey guys, try this again. Take three. All right, so um, this lesson is going to look at or be a review of how to round whole numbers and estimate sums and differences. This will help you as you start the week of May 4th, next week, you have um, certain math pages that, that you'll be working on next week. Uh, specifically, this will help you as you get to Envisions, page 101, 103, and 105. And I'm going to show you what those pages look like real quick. So again, this is the week of May 4th. May the 4th be with you. A little Star Wars humor there. So this is what page 101 looks like. Uh, page 103 and page 105, okay? So as you get to those pages, this will help you with that. All right, so let's take a look. There's different ways that we've taught you, different strategies that you can use to round numbers. The main strategy that they're going to be having you use on those pages is um, using a number line. So let's take a look at rounding the number 127 to the nearest 100 using a number line. So on the, the math pages that you'll be working on, the number lines will already be there for you. But if you wanted to like do it on scratch paper yourself, you would draw yourself a number line. You would mark each end and then you would mark the middle, remember? Okay, now as far as labeling, you always gotta label before you actually try to round the number. So since we're rounding this to the nearest 100, we wanna look at or think about what are the landmark numbers or the 200s that 127 would be found between, okay? And to determine that, um, the first 100 is easy. You just look at what's in the 100s place. There's a 1 there. So that means that the first 100 is 100. And the next 100 at the very end is going to be the other or the next 100. If you were to count by 100s, next would be 200. Okay, halfway, well, think about what's half of 100. Half of 100, halfway between 0 and 100 is 50. So halfway between any 100 is that lower 100 plus 50 more. So halfway would be 150. Okay. Now, I'm using these landmark numbers to kind of help me determine um, which 100 127 rounds to. Okay. It's either going to round to 100 or 200. So what I'm doing basically is this. I ask myself, is 127 less than 150, or is 127 greater than 150? Well, I know that the 20s come before the 50s, so that means that 127 would be less than 150, so it's going to be somewhere over here, right? Making it closer to 100. So 127 rounds to, sorry, rounds to 100, okay? So that's using the number line method. Um, if you're in my class, you know that I like to use this strategy here, which kind of works the same way as the number line. For some reason, I just prefer drawing it like this instead of drawing out a number line. So it kind of looks like this. Um, I don't know what you want to call them, branches maybe, but it, like I said, it works the same way. So I determine my landmark numbers. It's between 100 and 200. So I label those two branches with the landmark numbers. And then I label the middle line with that halfway number, which is 150. And then, like I said, it works the same way. I know that 127 is between 100 and 150, making it closer to 100, meaning that... 127 rounds to 100, okay, and there's my answer, all right? We also taught you a rounding rule, and as far as the wording that your teacher used to teach you the rounding rule, it might be slightly different, but the main thing is the same, okay? So I found this, this little poster here. So if, if we're rounding the same number to the nearest 100 using our rounding rule, um, it says, underline the digit, look next door. If it's five or greater, add one more. If it's less than five, leave it for sure. Everything after is a zero, not more. So that simply means this. I'm rounding to the nearest hundred. So where it says underline the digit look next door, the digit is the number that you're rounding to. So I'm rounding to the nearest hundred. So I underline the digit in the hundreds place. Then it says look next door. 
Well, you always go to the right or what digit is in front of it. So next door, we have the tens place, right? And I always like to circle that next door number. And then this guy is the boss of the hundreds place, basically. So that takes us to our next part of the rule. It says, if it's five or greater, add one more. Well, is two five or greater? No, it's not. So look at the next part of the rule. If it's less than five, leave it for sure. Well, this is less than five, meaning I leave this hundreds place. I leave it alone. It rounds down to 100. It stays the same, okay? And then the last part of the rule says everything after. So that means everything after the hundreds place is a zero, not more. So that simply means that the two in the tens place tells the hundreds place to stay the same and everything after it becomes zero. So it rounds to 100, okay? So it's three different ways that prove that 127 rounds to 100. All right, now, you're also going to, going to be required to round numbers to the nearest 10. So let's take a look at the same number, 127, and this time we're rounding it to the nearest 10 using the same strategies. So first we're using our number line. So this time it's gonna be a little different because notice it says we're rounding to the nearest 10. So my landmark numbers are not hundreds this time, they're tens. Tens are multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. So. To determine the first 10, look at what's in the tens place. There's a two in the tens place, meaning 20. So that means 120 is the first 10. And if I count by tens, 130 would be the next 10. So those are my landmark numbers. And now when I'm thinking about halfway, what's well, not half of 100 anymore, so, so don't think 150, okay? Now we're thinking half of 10. Well, between zero and 10 is five, so halfway, is five more than whatever this low 10 is. So that means 120 plus five, that's 125, okay? So now I'm just thinking about and asking myself where on the number line would 127 go? Is it less than 125 or is it greater than 125? Well, I know that the seven in the ones place is greater than the five in the ones place, meaning it's going to be somewhere over here, making it closer to the 130 so that means that 127 rounds to 130, okay? Using my other strategy that I like to use that kind of works the same way, okay? This would be 120. Here's our 130. So we have our branches labeled with our, those benchmark numbers, okay? Halfway is 125. And again, I'm just asking myself, where would 127 go? Is it between 120 and 125, or is it between 125 and 130? I know it would be over here, making it closer to 130. So once again, that shows that 127 rounds to 130. It's closer to 130. Using our rounding rule, okay? Underline the digit, look next door. So underline the digit is step one. So our digit is different this time because this time we're riding to the nearest 10. So my digit is the one in the tens place, okay? Look next door. Well, remember I said, always go to the right, to the place value in front, okay? So before the tens place is the ones place. So the ones place is the boss of the tens place. This guy's gonna tell the tens place what to do, all right? If it's five or greater, add one more. Well, this is five or greater. Seven is greater than five, so we're gonna add one more, okay? Now, notice nothing happens to the hundreds place. That stays the same, okay? So that stays the same. The seven tells the tens place to add one more. So that becomes three. That means this part we skip because it's not less than five. The seven is not less than five. So we go down to the last part. Everything after is a zero or more. So it rounds to 130. All right. So that is a quick review of how you can round numbers to the nearest 100 and to the nearest 10. Now, you're also going to be asked to use rounding to the nearest 100 and to the nearest 10 to estimate sums. So I have an addition equation here. 
or standard algorithm, 434 plus 268. When you get to this page, guys, it's not asking you to add this, okay? It's not asking you for an exact answer. It says use rounding or round to the nearest hundred to estimate sums. So an estimate is not the exact answer. So that means that I'm going to um, round this number to the nearest hundred. Now, I'm not gonna go into using the number line method here or the branches because for, for, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use the rounding rule. So this will go a little faster. So um, I'm rounding to the nearest hundred. So look, um, so underline the digit, okay? Look next door. If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, then it stays the same. Well, this is less than five. So that means that the four stays the same and everything after becomes zero. So that means 434 rounds to 400, okay? Now I'm gonna round 268 to the nearest 100. So underline the digit, look next door. If it's five or higher, we add one more. So the six is higher than five. So that means I'm gonna add one more to the hundreds place. The two becomes three, everything after becomes zero. So 400 plus 300 are my rounded numbers, okay? Now I use this to come up with my estimate, okay? I know that zero plus zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, and four plus three is seven. So I have an estimate of 700. All right, that would be an acceptable estimate. All right, now we're gonna do the same exact equation, but this time we're rounding to the nearest 10 to come up with our estimated sum. So this time, using my rounding rule, I look to the digit, I'm rounding to the nearest 10, so my digit is three. The ones place is the boss of the tens place, okay? If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, then this stays the same. This is less than five, so the three stays the same. And remember, the hundreds place is not getting touched, all right? That's not changing. So that would mean that the four stays, the three stays the same, and everything after becomes zero, meaning 434 rounds to 430, okay? And I'm gonna round 268 to the nearest 10. So I underline my tens place. The ones place is the boss of the tens place. It's gonna tell it what to do. If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, it stays the same. Well, eight is higher than five. So that means we're gonna add one more to just the tens place. Hundreds place, remember, doesn't get changed. We're not rounding to the hundreds place. So the two stays, the six becomes seven, everything after becomes zero. Meaning 268 rounds to 270, all right? And now we're adding this to come up with our estimate, okay? So zero plus zero is zero. Three plus seven is 10. Well, I can't put a 10 in the tens place. So I put the zero there and I carry my 10 to the hundreds place, meaning one plus four is five, plus two more is seven. So I get an estimate of 700. Got it? All right. So now we're gonna look at how to estimate numbers to come up with, or I'm sorry, how to round numbers to come up with an estimated difference. The difference, remember, is just the answer to a subtraction problem. So again, it's not asking for an exact answer here, okay? It wants me to round to come up with an estimated difference. So I'm gonna to round to the nearest 100. Um, so I look to the hundreds place and I underline the tens place is the boss. If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, then the hundreds place stays the same. Zero is less than five the last time I checked. So that means the six stays the same. Everything after becomes zero. So 606 rounds to 600, all right? 473, we're rounding to the nearest hundred. So I underline the hundreds place, the tens place, tells it what to do. If the tens place is five or higher, we add one more. Seven is higher than five, so we add one more. Four becomes five, everything after becomes zero. Just always remember, if you're rounding to the nearest hundred, boys and girl, 
your rounded numbers should end in two zeros because multiples of 100 end in two zeros, okay? All right, then you would simply subtract this to come up with your estimated difference. Zero minus zero, zero. Zero minus zero, zero. Six minus five is one. So you have an estimate of 100, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the same equation, the same algorithm, but this time we're rounding to the nearest 10 to come up with our estimated difference. So since we're rounding to the nearest 10, we look to the tens place, that's the digit we underline. The ones place is the boss of the tens place. If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, we leave it alone, okay? Six is greater than five, so the zero becomes one more. Well, what's one more than zero? One. Hundreds place is not gonna change. Six stays, zero becomes one, everything after becomes zero. So 606 rounds to 610. And now we're almost done. Now we're gonna round 473 to the nearest 10. So I underline the tens place. The ones place is what I'm using to figure out what happens to that tens place. If it's five or higher, we add one more. If it's less than five, it stays the same. Well, three is less than five, so this stays the same. The hundreds place doesn't get touched, so the four stays there. The seven stays there, everything after becomes zero. So 473 rounds to 470. So notice, when you round a number to the nearest 10, boys and girls, your rounded numbers should end in one zero because tens end with one zero. Multiples of 10 end in one zero, all right? So now I'm just gonna subtract this. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus seven, be careful. Sometimes when you're doing your estimates, you do have to use regrouping. So one is lower than seven, so you can't take one thing and take away seven. Okay, If I have one pencil, I can't take seven pencils away. It doesn't make sense. So I have to borrow. I have to regroup. So I need a 10, so I go over to my hundreds place, and I'm taking one of those hundreds. So that means the six becomes five, and I'm breaking that hundred into 10 tens, okay? So I'm giving those 10 tens to the tens place, meaning the one 10 now becomes 11, okay? Now I have 11 minus seven is four, and then five minus four is one for an estimated difference of 140. So boys and girls, hopefully this will help you as you are working on those math pages, Envisions 101, 103, and 105, next week, the week of May 4th, all right? If you have any questions, reach out to your teacher. Thanks.